Hey guys, so we're back, and so we, in the last tutorial, we got this running some Fibonacci code, which is nice, and if you guys went through, you could continue clocking through the outputs and continue to keep going to up to like 244 or whatever, whatever the max Fibonacci number is that fits in 8 bits. But, uh, so now what I want to do is I want to hook up the user inputs. And so I was experimenting with how I want them to look, and I kind of like what I came up with down here. Okay, so I'm thinking the screen will be like that. We'll have seven segs there, and then we'll have like user inputs here. These will have uh, our levers like this. But um, what I'm going to actually redo is I'm going to move these user inputs to be facing in the front here, I think. And I'm going to try to make this flush so there's not like a box like that. But I'm thinking something that'll look like this, and then we have the BCD stuff here. And what we can do is we can grab an output straight from here to go right over there. It'll be slow, but it doesn't matter. We can put buffers on it and hold multiple data sets and have them clock in over time. Um, and then here is our screen. So we just put our Y decoder and X decoder, and then we'll run these these four lines up to each one of those decoders. and. Uh, We'll have our screen working. So what I want to do is hook up where these user inputs are going to go. Okay, so we're back up here. Oops, I just forgot my lever. Who needs them anyway? I'll get a button. Okay. So what's nice about this is the most significant bit happens to be pretty high up already, and the least significant bits happen to be pretty low. So what we need is probably to even come up one more, so like right here, uh, maybe not, we don't have to use one of those, but go like this, bring this up like that. Like that. And like that. Okay, cool. So now we have four inputs like that. Now what we can do is we can come out to... I don't know where this is going to interfere. See, I want to make coding this easy still. So maybe we'll just continue to come up a bit. Oh, we don't have this clock line. Oops. And if we have four inputs, it'll be we can do like one, two, three, four. That's actually the perfect length right there. Fit four inputs. <coughs> thing is though we're gonna have to fit a decoder in there so this might still have to come yeah what I'm gonna do is position one position two I'm going to cut from here and we're gonna go up one two we're gonna paste it here We may still need to go up a little bit further than that, actually. 
because I want to give us enough room where we can code this ROM easily down here without anything getting in the way. And the other thing we're going to have down here is to fit a decoder that'll do the that'll pick which one of these addresses we want. Um, but screw it, we'll do it for here for now. And now this can actually be shifted over a bit. But the other thing here is we're going to want to be able to display our PC line. Our PC output needs we want to be able to display that to our user inputs. <coughs> which I want to be like right over here somewhere. So we need to give ourselves enough room here where we can put in clock controls and all that stuff in this area. So yeah, I think I think that'll be fine like this. So now we'll place redstone on it. Okay. Now we gotta put this down here. So now we need to build a muck system with four inputs that we could choose from. So how we do this is there's this mechanism here. It's kind of hard to see. But if I say if I move this box. So our inputs <coughs> will come in and go into a repeat into a comparator in subtract mode. So what we'll do is we'll go get comparators in subtract mode. Okay, so here's our input. It goes into a comparator and subtract mode like that. Okay, but what goes behind it is a furnace. Well, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to show you what's in the furnace first. Oh, whoops. So in the furnace, we have redstone. But this, all this does, oops is it takes in our input and it subtracts 13 signal strength from it. So we have max input here, we subtract 13 signal strength from it, and we output two signal strengths. So what this does is it allows it to go from here to here and turn off this torch. And it won't allow it to keep going up. So this is only for that output right there. And then we put in a full signal strength down here that will reach all the way up. And then that's our AND gate. And so when this bit is off, it'll only be able to turn off this, but some other ones might be on. And when we read, it'll only turn off the bits that were on here. And so actually I messed this up and I have to go get, move that over, but I'm going to steal one of these like this. And uh, actually I'm, I'm going to position one, position two, copy like that, make sure I have it. And uh, do that. So over here we need to, so our input will come in like that. The output, so, so now we, we want four inputs, so we're gonna do this and we're gonna stack three times, like that. And oh, once like that, because we actually don't need this. Here's one. There's another one. There's another one. And there's another one. But it's not that easy to connect these out. We have to put in these slabs. Oops. Like this.
Okay. And then this is able to read out like this. <clears throat> See how it's outputting two signal strength right now? And then when we put in an input here, or let's say I do that, it turns off here and it allows what if there was an input or if there was torches here, it would allow reading. And then basically, what we do is we hook up lines underneath that would control that. But uh, what I want to do for now is just get uh, well, we're gonna have to if we want this to stack properly, we gotta put these here. We're going to have to go position one, position position one on top of that redstone, position two here, stack three, okay. Now what we have to do is move it down. So position one, position two, move, okay, now we need to stack this, position one, position two, Let's just make sure I got it done right. All right, so now we're gonna have to stack three of them like that. Nice. Now, if we just update them real quick with uh, levers, Sounds bad. There we go. Okay. Everything's off except for this one, which makes sense if there's none of that. Okay. Cool. So now they output two. They always output two signal strength. And then uh, what we do down here. Is uh, if number one, number two, number three, and number four, they're able to pull from. So we make an AND gate like this, a multi multi input and AND gate that we're then able to read the outputs of like this. If I do position one, position two, stack three, okay. So let's put on nine, two, five, three. So this one goes to nine. This one's the two. This should be the five. And then this should be three. Just like that, we can read our user inputs. So, what we will need to do is then bring our decoder bits here out to here that will decode which input we want in, to bring into our CPU. Okay, so we need to build a decoder into this, and uh, I'm not really quite sure the easiest way to do this, but it looks like it's going to be like this, which might make coding this a little hard. 
I'm sorry. All right, so let's let's experience experiment here. So we're going to need two inputs. Yeah, this is going to be hard. We're going to have to move this out one and up one. So we're going to go position one here. Oops. Position two. We're going to cut from here. Go up one, two, and three, maybe? That should be enough. Paste minus A. on. Okay. All right, so now that should be enough room to work with. So now we need to build decoders into this. So I'll work with this one here. And the way we will build a decoder into it is we'll say this will be Continue the stack downwards, position one, position two, stack two, like that. Maybe we could do stack two point five there. Um, so we need to bring this back like this and like that. That would need to come up if we're trying to build the decoder nicely on that side, but maybe we could do it on this side here. No, damn it. This does not want to work with us nicely here. If we do this, yeah, that'll work. No, that won't work. God damn it. All right, we're coming down like this. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Now that I've struggled for long enough doing that, we need a repeater. Position one, position two. Should maybe we'll do position two. Wait, no. Position one, position two. There we go. Stack one. Oh, I'm only doing it once. Yeah. Stack one. Point five. No. I didn't want this right here. Okay. Cool. So now we have that. I want to do position one. Position two. Okay, now 
The last thing I want to add is indicator lights. So we need a lamp. And this will tell you which input is being pulled. So I would like Hmm, okay. Yeah, right here we can place blocks like this. That would work. Okay, cool. So this will this will work the way I want to do this. And then actually what I want to do is make these um inputs lights and that'll be an out uh, a, a light output uh, let's go position one position two stack three okay and then I want to get red um, I don't really recall the order that I did. But red, blue. Uh, I like the light blue better. Go green. We'll go lime. And we'll go yellow. Just some colors for our inputs. Nice. Okay. So now I guess we'll decode our decoder. So it'll be zero zero. Uh, zero one. Oh no! Shoot. We want this, 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 and and this, and then the other thing is we don't want zero zero to always be reading. Is somebody near me? Oh, okay. So we don't we don't want zero zero to always be reading. So the other thing we want to do here is stack on another layer. Well, it doesn't really need to be stacked on. Instead what we can do is we can just go like right here. Actually this might be the easier way to do it. No. Alright we'll leave that like that because what we need to do also is put a torch like this and then do position one, position two, stack three. Okay, so now that we have that, we want to get this torch output here into that. So we want this to go do do do, and that'll tell us when it's if it's being asked for the input. Okay, so now that we can display hmm. Huh. If that back feeds down one like that. Huh. What am I gonna do here? What can we do instead? Let me figure this out. Okay, so I think our only solution here 
is to move this back a block, which would require this to come like this. So now what we can do is go position one here, position two, move. Now that it's moved over one, go like this. Okay, then what we can do is go like that, and then replace the slabs. There, so now it's telling us that it's polling zero. Now we don't want it to always be polling zero. We only want it to be polling when we only want it to be telling us it's polling when it's actually polling. Right? That would make sense. So what we need is to get some inputs or we need to flood sorry we need to flood these decoders like this so now it's saying it's not zero Should still give us room to code. Shoot. Okay. Wait, can I do this instead? Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Okay. Yeah, that's better. And then Okay. So now this will be hooked up to our instruction that says read user inputs, which is instruction number nine. So instruction number nine here. I'll come here. And it will say allow the decoder to work. like that and then it goes one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and then let's see if that reaches it reaches them all nice so now when it's the CPU gets that instruction, it'll tell you that it's polling zero or that it's polling whatever bit that it gets and it gets those bits from over here. 
So I might actually, yeah, I'm going to redo this here. I'm going to go move this like this. wasn't much of a change which we could have done in the first we could have had a vertical stacks in the first place okay and then this is going to be the least significant bit right here significant bit. Do it like this. We're able to fish those wires through like that. And then now we'll go to our bus and color and we'll connect least significant bit here to least significant bit here. I'll try to keep this right. It looks like we're going to have to bring it up like this. significant and then we have our most significant bit right there Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to jump to line zero so that no other instruction is running. And now we're going to spoof a load immediate or a, a user a user um, input, which is number nine. So we're going to put in the instruction nine here. Oops. There we go. And now it's telling us that we're, it's reading zero here. It's actually able to reach. Oh yeah, because we made it reach. It's reading zero, but let's put in ones here so that we can see how far they actually reach. And so they come up here. So this looks like we're going to have to do some bull crap. Like that. One and two. Okay, so that should be outputting that it's number three that it's reading. Like that. Nice. Okay. And then now, does any of this reach? Let's put on 15 in every single. input okay so we're putting in 15 
for getting out of 15. And how far does that reach? It makes it there, doesn't make it there, it doesn't make it there, it doesn't make it there. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to put Peter there, Peter there, Peter there, Peter there, and then a block right like that. And now our inputs make it in, and it's allowing to be read into our CPU, and it should be outputting 15 out of the ALU right now, which it is. Okay. And then now if uh, we came over here, and we did, um, instead of three, we put in a two, it should have moved over, nice, and then it should still be outputting 15 here. Still out putting 15. Let's put in a 1. Moved over to here. And we're still outputting a 15 there. It's not allowing that 15 to go into the PC. It's only allowing the 15 to go into the, the uh, CPU. And then if we put in 0, 0. You see that we're here, and it's still getting the value 15. I'm still outputting 15. And then, when I stop telling it to do this instruction, it shouldn't have any value coming out of the ALU anymore, because it isn't, it's being told to do nothing. When it's told to do nothing, it should be outputting nothing. And there we go, we have a user input. And it tells us which input is being pulled. Okay, so let's finish building our user input here. So we're just going to fill in all the blank spots with whatever color you want to use. I'm just using my bus and color because I want to be consistent with colors. The uh, colors here, like the red, blue, green, and yellow, don't really have any significance. They're just here for aesthetics, I guess. And I mean, if we wanted to, we could have done this, which actually I might do instead. Did I do this one all the way down? No, I did not. So what if we, uh, We have these stick out and then do it like this. Obviously sucks because then you'd have to Yeah, okay, I'll figure that out afterwards. Alright, let's just get this how we want it. Actually what we'll do is we'll get rid of this for now. We'll just do it like that. So that's fine. And then we'll, oh no. Okay. Oh, 
that's not what I wanted. that and I think that's a nice looking user input so now what we want to do is give ourselves a floor like that so we're going to come over three like that and then over two like that and then we'll stack uh, six, nine. Okay. So that's where a user input will be. Now we want to have our clock controls here, and then also screw it. I want to do. I do want to have um, a way that we can control our branching. So maybe I will give branching inputs here also. So yeah, let's work on that. Okay guys, so what I want to do is I want to add a way for the user to be able to adjust clock speed. So how we're going to do this is we're going to build like this. Input, output. We'll connect like this. Input comparator like this and so now we have a way that if power goes here we get a clock and the user can add delay so we'll put it at minimal delay here the fastest that I think it'll be able to run at so there's two three four five six seven eight nine ten so what this is doing is it's a 20 tick clock, 10 ticks on, 10 ticks off, 10 ticks on, 10 ticks off. And that should work because the buttons that we were using here are 10 ticks. And with the right cycle, that meant it was 10 ticks on and then 10 ticks off before the, or so it was 10 ticks before the right would happen. And so that should, that should work based off our buttons and then we can speed it up even more. So if we need 10 ticks, what I'll do is I'll add I'll put this to being six ticks and I'll make this all four. One, two. So this is one, two, three, four, five. Um, so we actually want this needs to be like that because you have to count this as part of a tick of delay. So that should be a 10 tick clock that the user could then speed up by making that now it's nine ticks on, nine ticks off. Now it's ten ticks on, ten ticks off. Okay. So that, that'll that be the clock. Okay, so now we're going to add another control. This is going to be for clock on or off. Basically be hooked up like this. So now when we say turn the computer on, we get a clock. Okay, so now we need to somehow be able to display a 6-bit program counter line, but we're only able to fit five lights here, but we have six spaces if we did every other one. So what I'm thinking is, if we do PC output here, oh, actually, there's one more 
we need this, which will be our manual clock. So we have manual clock, and then we have turn our clock on. So that'll work. And then, so this will be our program counter output. And then we're going to want to be able to force an input into our program counter. And how we're going to force an input into our program counter is by giving 6-bit input also. So we can control our program counter and branch to whatever line we want. Like this. Shoot. There. And now what I want to do is I want gray. Maybe it's both of A, okay. I want the light gray glass. And then um stack ten. Wow, that was actually perfect. Okay. And so I'm thinking that this will be what we can see through like this. I'll make a I'll do this and then we'll make a window in so you can see into the CPU. It'll be this high that and then we'll stack this uh, 20 see how far that goes yeah that's good enough nice okay so we'll stack this definitely doesn't need to be 20 so we'll do 15 Okay, maybe it needs to be 20. Oh, it's because this top one was double stacked. Or double, there's, uh, yeah, okay. Okay. These are input for our computers coming along. Over here will be our 7 seg. We, we hook it up over there. And on top will be our screen. So I think this is good for now. Um, so in the next few tutorials, we'll be hooking up our seven segs into screens and then writing programs for those. Okay, actually, I lied. That's not it for the tutorial. So I actually want to hook up this here. And so how we're going to do that is we're going to come over here. We're going to come over like this. And then we're going to place this. Go one. So we know that it's a half stack like this that we have to do instead of a full. So we need this to work like that. And then we need our slabs here. Oh, no, that's wrong. We need to go like this. Sorry, guys. OK. We need our slabs. Here, because then when uh, this is here, we want it to stack like this. Oops. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to go position one here, position two, copy, paste without the error. 
So there's three, four, five, six, and then it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So it makes it to here. This to this position one, position two, shoot, position two, stack five, like that, and then um, do this here, position one. Position two, stack five. Okay, so now what it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Perfect. So now it'll read out what line of code. The PC line will tell us what PC, what line of, what, what program counter line we're on. See, so if I, if I increment to one here, this should say we're on line one. It does. And it should, it'll actually tell us what line we're on before it actually gets there because there's more delay built into this system <laughs> than there is here. And then now we just need a way to put in branches. So let's work on that. Okay, well something that we know is we're gonna need this basic design here. So I'm going to come at the highest point over here, um, right here, and at the lowest point here. I'm going to copy. I'm going to paste without the air. Um, I don't know why I pasted there. There we go. Okay. Looks like we don't have to go down. And this isn't a data critical path, so it doesn't really matter how much delay is on this. So we will select here to here, stack five of them. Here to there, stack five. Here to here, stack five. Here to here, stack ten. I actually don't need to make this here, and stack twelve. All right. And then we will go position one, position two, stack. And stack. do is we flip on all of these, see where they reach, should all reach the same spot. It's not data critical path or anything like that, but it'd be nice to have it update quickly for us and then, you know, it's a user panel, we want it to be user friendly and pretty quick. Shoot. 
shoot. I think I need to get a better mouse. This isn't clicking when I tell it to sometimes. Okay, that makes it here. And let's see here. Data makes it there. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Cool. Okay. So now we have that. We'll leave some inputs on like that. And then now we want to hook up our clock to our clock here. So it actually would just just come like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, oh yeah, we're going to need a repeater, I'll put it here, okay, oh, and then the last thing we need is the uh, input that says, go ahead and branch, so actually I'll do that here, and then this will be branch enable. The easiest way to do this would actually be one, two, well, we don't have to count if it's on. Oh, no, it's But, all right, let's let's see what happens when we try to see out. All right, so it's telling us that we're on some high number here. So let's try to jump to line 14. So I say enable the branch, and you'll clock it. It goes to that line. If I say go to line eight, manually clock it. It goes to line eight. So go to line zero, manually clock it. We're stuck on line four. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay. So now we're on line zero. Oh, because line eight was a branch telling it to go to line four. So that that's why. Okay. So now let's label this with signs. We have enable branch. We have turn on clock. And we have man clock. We have PC out. Or no, we'll say PC line, and we'll say branch address. That'd be nice if I could spell branch branch address. There we go. 
Use your input, is coming along. 